How's it going, guys? <clears throat> you know, I've been thinking a lot about um, the discussion that I had with Dr. Zelenko the other day. You know, and I was asking him about how is it that people can bring themselves to you know, understand the what, the what aspect, the quote-unquote what aspect of this whole situation, but they can't fathom the why. You know, and he told me that people, it's very difficult for people to go into the unknown. You know, uh, they prefer to stay in what they know. I mean, again, it's one thing to acknowledge that, for example, you know, something was suppressed. Um, a lot of people will say, you know, uh, there's been a lot of, let's say, bad, bad government or bad governing or mistakes, right? They'll never say like, um, they'll never say, oh, this was deliberate, you know, because again, they're good people. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they're good people, and they like to think that most people are good. Even the people who are kind of like, I guess you can call them shady, they don't want to, nobody wants to kill two billion people. You know, my mother asked me the other day, why, why would somebody want to get rid of these people? If you're talking about, you know, for example, Europe and the EU and all these organizations, why would they want to get rid of two billion people? And I said, well, think about it, though. All the industries right now are going into automation. You're not needed. They don't need you anymore, you know? And again, it's very difficult for people to fathom this. You know, Dr. Zelenko used the example from uh, Solzhenitsyn's book, Gulag Archipelago. So, I'm sorry, guys, it's just like really bright here. <laughs> It's just like one of these days, you know, when the, when the sun's not really out, but it's... Okay, there we go. He used the example of, um, you know, Gulag Archipelago, where he was talking about how Stalin made people build a bridge, but it was essentially a bridge to, you know, to nowhere, to nothing. It wasn't really meant to be a bridge, and it, and it killed a bunch of people. And the whole point was... Solzhenitsyn was, was conveying was that the entire point was to basically just have the people who were building the bridge die. It was just a method for them to die. So what do we get from that, my friends? We get that there are people who just will use, uh, you know, certain situations to get people to do certain things in order to just have those people be hurt or, or, or killed, you know? In order for people to take certain things, like right now, guys, they just made, you know, there was a report. Shmamurna said, oh, they have a solution for kids under six years old. Way in the beginning of this thing, guys. Way, 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 way in the beginning of this thing. Notice again, guys, they started out telling us that two things they're only going to give it to people 65 and over and that it was going to protect you 95 percent now it says it doesn't now it says no now it says it just stops you from you know schmospital then they said schmospital then they said if you get into schmospital you won't die ladies and gentlemen they've been they've been pushing they've been they've been moving the goalpost and we and they do it so incrementally, guys, that we don't even notice. You understand? And they started out 65 and over. Guys, I took my parents here in Teaneck, March 2021. I took them to get the stuff. And then they said 40 or people 50. And then they said the head of Schmeiser himself, Schmula, in an interview, they asked him, Way in the beginning, are you going to get it? He said, I'm perfectly healthy. I'm 50, at that time, he was 57 years old or 58. He's like, I'm not in that profile. I don't need it. 
ladies and gentlemen, the science, you want to tell me the science changed? So, again, we, we've gone over this discussion, this is an old conversation, but the point is a lot of people just, in the back of their minds, you know, a lot of people you talk to, they'll say, yeah, Tzvi, you're probably right, but I'm going to dive into Hashem that everything's going to be okay. My question is, why didn't you dive into Hashem that everything was going to be okay without getting the stuff? You know, just dealing with the affliction. I mean, you know there's a treatment. I know people that took the treatment, got the stuff, took, the, got afflicted, took the treatment, the actual therapeutic, it worked for them, and what did they do? After that, they went and still got the, you know what? I mean, some people had to. One of them's a teacher, friend of mine, nice guy. But other people, my friends, just, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just don't know. Very strange. Very strange behavior. But it goes to show, guys, this is this is a spiritual war, you know? Dr. Shmelenko said it's a, this is a spiritual war. And it's Mitzrayim. And he goes, remember, only 20% left Mitzrayim. I mean, in our case, we're trying to get way more people to leave uh, Mitzrayim, you know. And we have Pesach coming up, Bezrat Hashem. And guys, I think it's an appropriate, it's a very inappropriate, not inappropriate, but it is a appropriate time for us to start waking up, guys. You know, it's a very appropriate time for us to start waking up. Because if we don't, you know, according to Shpomerna, by the summer we're going to have little kids. Guys, you know, you know, you realize what they're doing with, with this whole little kids thing. These, these are people who are like, as my friend likes to call it, demon beasts, who actually get energy. This is going to sound completely insane. They get energy from when the children, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's something that you can't even fathom or comprehend. I can't even comprehend it. But the, these are very, very evil people. They are tapped into the Sitra. They are the Sitra. They're part of it. They're tapped into the dark side. They get their energy from the dark side. And guys, you notice, uh, miraculously, suddenly, a bunch of them, you know, Peppermint Patty, uh, Schmillery, Shmo Mama, and Cotton Swab, they all got the affliction at the same time. And they all tweeted out, except for Swab, who doesn't like, really like to participate in this kind of stuff. They all tweeted out, basically, some variations of the same sentence. I got ta 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 Thank God I have took the stuff. Uh, please go get schmoosted. Baruch Hashem, I took it. They didn't say Baruch Hashem. They have nothing to do with Hashem. They said, I'm so grateful that I, you know, even, even, even Amalek is, is, you know, has gratitude. For stuff, maybe that's why he has some, some kind of level of schut merit <laughs> to go forward with what he wants to do. You know, even Amalek has that. It's a it's a big lesson that you know, if Amalek has gratitude, we can also have gratitude for things in life. You know, we should. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, it's almost like clockwork. It's it's <clears throat> it's it's miraculous, guys. They are these are people who are engaged in a two year long. Uh, ritual. This is what they're engaged in. This is what they're participating in. We don't understand the depths of their the darkness that they're in, that they're trying to drag us into. There's a gentleman, last night I mentioned, you know, um, our hindsight in, in all of the information that we have about the Nazis and everything that they were planning, everything that they were able to um, you know, achieve and everything that we're planning that they weren't able to achieve. And one of the things we know is about the occult practices. Ladies and gentlemen, you think that stuff went away? Mr. Swab, his father, was a Nazi supporter with his company. I think, I mean, it was a Swiss-based company, but then they moved to Germany. Read all about it, my friends, in Ravensburg. You know, there's a, there was a whole in-depth article about his uh, research, you know, very in-depth um, investigative report about Swab and his father, Cotton Swab, you know, and the, ladies and gentlemen, Nazis never went away. Their ideology never went away. The specific ideology of eugenics. Again, I go back to, in Nuremberg, they called it a crime against humanity, even though, it was a, even though the people targeted were Jews, but it was a crime against humanity, my friends. Today, 
the crime you see is not just against Jews. It's a crime against all of humanity. They did not go away. They said, they're saying to themselves, well, you know, now we're just going to have a war against God. We couldn't go to war directly against God's PR agents, as Dr. Shemaiko calls us, the Jews. You know what? We're just going to go to war against God. We, there's been enough of a pushback against God over the years. There's been enough, uh, you know, so to speak, stigmatizing of religion, particularly Christianity. There's been enough of removing, so to speak, the idea of God as a thing from Western uh, kind of society and zeitgeist. Now the time is ripe for us to go ahead and do this. And we know that people are going to rely on institutions. They're going to rely on the word of man. They're going to rely on experts and, uh, you know, people to confirm things for them and trust the scientism, trust the experts. We are going to go, go ahead and do this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Sitrachra. This is Pharaoh. This is Amalek. This is everything rolled. This is the Tower of Babel. This is Haman. My friends, in the time before Mashiach, we're told all of these entities are going to be rolled into one and come back. And this is what we have in front of our face. This is what we're looking at. And if you don't know that's what you're looking at, I'm telling you, this is what you're looking at. So now you know. <laughs> you know, as they say in G.I. Joe, now you know and knowing is half the battle. So, that's the story, guys. I mean, and Bezrat Hashem, you know, Pesach is coming. We're almost to, at the end of Adar. Pesach, Nisan, the month of Nisan is coming. We're almost at the end of Adar. And Bezrat Hashem, you know, I was talking uh, yesterday to someone, uh, I guess you can call him a, a coach, you know, life coach, coach. And uh, I was just saying how, you know, the things that he um, was, was able to, uh, how should I put this, pull out of me, I told him, you know, the stuff that I just said to you, I'm, I'm fully aware of it on my own, about myself, or I was fully aware of something that I was doing that was counterproductive to what I'm trying to accomplish in a certain area of life. And, but I said, it's one thing for me to be aware, it's quite another for another person to uh, enunciate that, and, and then for me to work through that issue with another person, with an unbiased outside source. That, what does that mean? I said, a prisoner cannot release himself from whatever prison he's in. A pr you can, he doesn't have, we don't have the key to release, release ourselves. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to release you. <laughs> you know, the question is, do you want to stay in your mental Mitzrayim and uh, just accept what you see on your television screen, you know, and, you know, watch the latest show, which they started on a dime, almost as if by clockwork, overnight to distract you from what's coming? Or do you want to be awake? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a situation now very, very soon with insurance companies who are going to report undue Hasvashalams, non shmovid undue Hasvashalams. What does that mean? That means it starts with insurance companies. It cascades throughout the whole market. And then what happens is these companies that produce the stuff that we were forced to take, ladies and gentlemen, if they're found to be guilty of fraud. It's one thing if, if there's just snide effects, stum, and there were proper th this and that and the other trials, but there's snide effects, you cannot sue them. That's one thing. But if they're found to be guilty of fraud, then what happens is their immunity is automatically removed. And that means there's going to be class action. Class action, I mean millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of people will be able to come after these companies, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's see what happens. Let's watch out for that. And Bizarat Hashem, guys. The truth, again, this is what Dr. Shemlenko and I were talking about. You know, it's not a question of um, if, it's just a question of when and how many lives is it going to take? How many, how many, what is the cost? That's really the issue here, guys. It's not a question of if it will happen. It will be revealed. The truth will be revealed. The question is when. The question is how many lives is it going to cost us, guys? Huh? You know, God forbid it should cost us a lot. 
Has for shalom. Any more. Even one more. Anyway, guys, it's been real. And I'll talk to you soon.